Hey people, this is Joel from Christian Technologies. Hope you guys are well and having a good day. Yay, it's finally summer. Schools have broken up. The real work begins because we have to cram in so many jobs. You know, about six to five weeks. I always say five because the week leading up to the start of the new term, everyone comes back. So it's kind of like you're pretty much working. When the teachers come back, or when staff come back, it's more or less you're back to the routine again, purely because the demands will come back in because they're back in their new classrooms, things have changed. Can you move this? Can you have that? Can you do this? Can you do that? And yeah, it's just a lot of work to kind of cram in. I've been at school at the moment. We're doing a, a new server installation. Okay, so this is the old server. If you notice, you've got a light flash in here and then you've got a light flash in there. And also you've got a warning light actually on the UPS. All right, so the server has a light on the hard drive, basically a hard drive's failing. And that light on the left is indicating that there's another fault with the server as well. And then you've got on the UPS, which is the backup power for the server. It's basically indicating that the battery is gonna fail anytime soon. Start a new server, start a new VMs, created the new domain, connected the new domain to the old domain on the server started a replication, started off the DFS a replication of data, which basically the reason why you do that is because it copies the permissions as well from Active Directory, which is great. So you don't have to implement the permissions again with specific users and whatnot. And then it, the old server prompted me to restart. Who told me to restart? Anyway, I restarted it, then it crashed. <laughs> So that put delays on because I had to use the backups to restore it. Now I'm hoping the backups work. It should do, fingers crossed. I mean, this was a school that I recently took over. I was using their existing backup system. I did test it and it was working, but we'll see. I've done now a whole volume drive backup basically. And that's kind of different from doing like a just restored one single file. I need that backup to work to so start the whole process again and make the replication and the copying of Active Directory a lot more smoother instead of me starting from scratch. Fingers crossed that's done. So I'm testing that now. All right, let's get back to this and see if this actually works. Now I unplugged the recovery uh, USB stick, this one, which I created on the Veeam software. I think it just goes straight in. So yeah, this is kind of like the moment of truth to see if the backups did work. The backup didn't work, which is disappointing. It booted up, but it went straight into the problem before, which is Windows couldn't complete the updates and doing the changes don't turn off the computer. What happened last time when the updates were removed, it messed up Active Directory. And that prevented me from continuing the replication of the domain controller from one to another. I am frustrated in a way because I went back as far as the 7th of July, and in theory, it should just kind of boot up and not necessarily remember the update. Is what it is. I forgot to mention the robotics competition on the 10th of July went really, really well. Three schools, thanks for the Bowen, Bowles, and St. Jonathan James for taking part. Thanks for all the children who engaged Thanks for my team, what came down and done a tremendous job. Thanks for the Bowen to allow us to host the event there. Everything went well. There was a video and I'll put the video link there or yeah, there or there. But yeah, it all went well and it was a really, really big event. And we're going to try and try and hopefully next year do it again. And we're going to hopefully have more schools. You know, we'll record the whole event again. But yeah, it was real fun. It was real good. Okay, so they've got this built-in software called Canon Universal Logon manager and as you can see you have to enter in a username and password so this is basically like a print and release job staff members will print a job it will hold it they will approach the photocopy machine type in their username and password and then they'll see the job now the communication between the new server and the photocopy machines is working great so they can authenticate as in the same username and password what they've used to log on to the pcs okay cool so now you can see Log in. So we're just gonna quickly open up my folders, desktop. Okay, don't like that, don't unstay. See this little green icon here, these green ones? I don't know if you can see it like that, there, there. 
5. That's a synchronization icon. You normally enable that if you're looking to do synchronized offline, online syncing and take your device off the network or off site. Let's say you've got a laptop that you would like to take home and do some work in. It's a Microsoft feature which enables you to take that laptop home and still kind of use your documents and then come back at your institution and then it syncs up back to the server. Now, obviously this is a desktop PC, so it doesn't need to have that feature because no one's taking this big PC home, <laughs> bringing it back. And what also what synchronization does as well, it kind of causes sluggishness and for the user experience as well. So I'm gonna take that off these four machines. All right, let's get back to the drive. So my home drive, great, staff shared. Great. All right, so I can access the drives. Great, wonderful. Don't really, I don't have any documentation, so I didn't expect to see anything there. And we're just gonna check if I could see the icons here. I can see one, two, three, four, great. All right, so the old one, which is this one here. All right, so it prompts up with my name. Now this, Previously, on the old system, it didn't prompt with the name. It didn't prompt for the user to enter in a pin. It just automatically went to the printer, the photocopy machine, without the user entering a pin number. And then you use your login credentials, as you, you saw me did for, my, for this computer, same login credentials to log into the photocopy machine and receive the job. This is the problem I'm having because when I enable a thing called secure print, there we go. At this point here, it should already have the settings are ready to authenticate to the photocopy machines. It should say administrator and it should have the pin number associated to the administrator, but it's got my name. It's not remembering it for some reason, which is a good point. Why is it not remembering it? Uh, we go to the photocopy machine and uh, we type in my credentials. Don't worry guys, I do not use these credentials for anything else. So I don't think you could hack into anything of my, oh, I didn't even show you. Just gonna do that now, one second. Right, secure print, jobs there. Okay, that worked. Yeah, so that's the confusing part. The prompt box shouldn't come up. It's very strange, but it did. I don't know why. I need to fix it. That's where I'm at with this job. But everything else seems to be okay. All the new computers are back on the network, back communicating to the new server, which is great. They've got three virtual servers. They've got the main server, they've got the data server, like file server, and they've got a print server. I mean, it's backed up, antivirus, anti-malware. Communication between the workstations are, are fine. So it's just now these little niggly bits. So I'll probably be here again Monday to finalize, make sure everything's done. Let's keep it moving. Hey people, hope you're well. This is Joe from Queen Technologies and it's another day and it's another school. Still finishing off that ongoing server uh, project from another school, but it's nearly done. It's taken me a bit more longer than it should have, but I'm at another school doing a Net2 Paxton software. Sometimes I do this every now and again, half out of school and help out um, a fellow engineer when they have problems. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm backing up the database on so the Net2 Paxton software. What is that? That is a software which controls doors, gates. I think that's it. So it's like a fob entry system like so. It's my keys, my fob like that. You should be able to, it allows you to fob in, fob out. Then should give you a fob, there we go. See, so you got this. Fob entry system, and yeah, that's red because my fob doesn't work, but, and then it will release the doors. So I'm basically moving the software from one computer to another. So currently I am backing up the database on a memory stick, and then I'm gonna put the software on a new machine. That's when the fun starts. Okay, let's keep it moving. Okay, so this is the second PC where I'm going to install the Paxton software in. All great fun. A nice school. They're getting some summer works done. So a lot of these are summer work jobs, which happens from time to time. Show you guys another cabinet, Spaghetti Junction. Wow. You've got a switch here. You may have another switch somewhere, but you can see all of these cables. It's quite messy. So for the likes of myself and engineer, it, because it's not neat, it'll take us twice as long to diagnose a problem or to find something or find a port or find a patch panel because of, because of the mess, basically. 
Anyway, back to the software. So the software basically locates the doors and the gates. This is a newer software. So what it's going to do currently is going to update the doors and software, sorry, the doors and the gates to the latest firmware. Now, the problem with that is that sometimes with these old panels, because the doors are connected to like a panel, when you do a firmware update, it may not work. And then you may have to depower the panel, put the panel back on and then install the software again, which is a pain in the bum. But fingers crossed, it could roll out and it'll work smoothly. Should do. This install, going to pen. Might do all in one. So what I reckon it'll probably do is fail and then I might have to do one at a time. I'm doing this for three schools. This is the second school I'm at at the moment. Um, and then I need to do the same thing on another school. So I've just finished doing the install of the Net2 Paxton software. It's now doing firmware updates on the controllers, which is the crucial part because you have to allow the controllers to update and it may re-update again and again and again. And that is the, look, see it's pending, pending, update, pending, update, pending. And the reason why I did that is because it had a previous version of the Paxton software. Now they've got an up-to-date version of the Paxton software. So that means it has to now update the control panels of the doors to communicate with the software. So this is going to take a little while. See you guys in the next one. Now that I've removed the software to another machine, I'm now going to install the client software on the original machine it was in the first place. I think that's what I'm going to do. Need to double check. All right, so everything's done pretty much. I'm just waiting for the firmware to update on all the panels. And um, that's it. On to the next school. All right. Peace. Hey guys, okay, cool. So at the third school, three schools, the third and final school, just moving the database from one to another. I showed you guys the steps of what I did prior before, so I'm not gonna show you again. But yeah, same kind of setup. School has moved over from the old server to cloud-based management, which is going through Microsoft Intune. It's interesting to see people's perspective on things, especially IT people perspective on things. When it comes to decisions of like schools with ongoing costs, especially where their budgets are really, really tight. I suppose managing or management, oh, it's just interesting. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the firmware to crack on and update. Yeah, this will be the last school. And then after the school, I'll go to uh, the schools that I manage and sort out their problems. But yeah, it's definitely interesting seeing how other engineers, companies work what they do, how they implement things. Is it similar? Is it not similar? Are they innovative? Are they not innovative? So yeah, it's good to see. Okay, so what they've done here, what they've been doing is taking away the old machines. So which were, yeah. So I think for me, I think what they're doing now is giving them all laptops. Yeah, they disconnect with the interactive whiteboard, the smart one. With the laptops, which I'm all for. I like laptops, the teachers, so they can move things around. So they can kind of work in multiple places and they're not restricted in one location. I think it's a good thing. I don't see a docking station, so I'm thinking they're plugging in HDMI cable and a USB to, to interact with the board so they could like write on the board and touch on the board. Go to another class to see what they've done here. They have similar setup, interactive whiteboard, HDMI connection, speaker here. The only thing, reason why I think they might be using a speaker is because the HDMI audio might have been playing out. And then you've got obviously the visualizer. Teachers love using visualizers. Ah, ubiquity up there. Everyone's a fan of ubiquity. I am. Depends on what models you kind of purchase. They're good tools. They're good Wi-Fi solutions. That's what they are. All right, let's see if the software has updated the doors. Three out of five. I think what they can do as well, which if they want to run like DHCP as well, and they could use maybe a switch to to do that. Layer three switch or network switch. It's a network switch. I'll show you what that is before. 
you may not know. Up there, right here, that's the network switch. And with these network switches, they can do quite a lot of things and also act as a IP distributor. So it's called DHCP, which basically what it does, you could use one of these network switches to distribute the internet across the school. So instead of the server, which they have here, so that's an old server. So it's the same kind of setup in the last two schools that I went to. They're obviously getting rid of these old servers. I mean, they're old anyway. They will use maybe Dream Machine or a network switch to distribute the internet across the school. And then with Microsoft Intunes, that will just manage the devices, the laptops, the tablets, the mobiles, if they have any. All right, guys, let's keep it moving.